So Tay-Sachs is well known as one of the rare uh, diseases out there. Um, it is a lysosomal storage disorder, as we were talking about, and it's due to a deficiency of hexaminidase A. And the classical form that is well known to medical students who learn about it um, is a rapidly progressive uh, form that presents in infancy between age three and six months and it leads to uh, death within a few, you know, the first few years of life. And the, uh, the, the typical features of it is a child who starts to lose milestones rapidly, become very hypotonic, uh, which eventually goes into spasticity, develops seizures, and uh, is not able to attain language. And the characteristic finding on eye exam or fundoscope exam is the uh, cherry red spot that will um, herald the the uh, diagnosis. For Tay-Sachs specifically, there's no liver and spleen involvement as you see in other lysosomal storage disorders. So that's the classical form that most medical students and doctors learn about uh, in their training. However, there are attenuated forms of this disease. There's a subacute form that can attack us slightly later, but there's even an, an adult form. And so uh, I take care of a, quite a large cohort of patients or adults with late onset Tay-Sachs, or LOTS. LOTS presents very differently than infantile Tay-Sachs. Um, most people start their diagnostic journey um, when they develop some weakness, some balance problems, and slurred speech. So it's a spinocerebellar cerebell, degeneration with some motor neuron features, as well as some psychiatric features. And so they can present initially with uh, unsteady gait, uh, they start to have falls. Uh, their, their family and friends might notice a very fast pressured speech that's slurred. And then they go on to have some weakness, specifically in their triceps, or uh, as opposed to their biceps. It's a very specific finding to late onset Tay Sachs. And this can start in their 20s, 30s. And sometimes when you speak to a person who's um, uh, presenting to you, they'll say, well, I was never that uh, steady, or I was always a clumsy child. So those symptoms might even start earlier in childhood and adolescence, but don't really come to light until their 20s and 30s. By the end of their 30s to 40s, they might start needing an assistive device, um, so they might have to use a cane to walk or a walker to balance themselves. Uh, they can be quite strong, but it's the ataxia that is problematic for them. They can develop dysphagia. It may not be a classic neurologic or a, um, from a dysphagia that's associated with other neurologic disorders. Uh, they might eat too fast and then it gets stuck in their throat. Uh, one of my patients requires a frequent Heimlich maneuver uh, because it's, uh, it's so, it impacts them. Other um, associated disorders are psychiatric symptoms. Sometimes the first presentation of the disease is actually a bipolar uh, disorder or even a manic episode that leads into the diagnosis. Initially it looks like a primary psychiatric uh, disease and in actuality when you look for other symptoms of late onset Tay-Sachs, you'll see some ataxia or some gait problems and slurred speech. So um, it's progressive, it's slowly progressive over decades. I have a patients in their 50s and 60s some of them do become wheelchair bound at some point because of the imbalance problems. Uh, sometimes the psychiatric problems become difficult and they do develop some impulsivity and require um, assistance in making their decisions. And currently there's no known treatment for either classical uh, Tay-Sachs, the infantile form, or late onset Tay-Sachs. However, there are medications in development that um, we hope to bring forth to clinical trials soon.